Hi, this is Lindworf playing games while rumbling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because they can, and they continue with Legacy of Cain Defiance, blind. Now, well, last time I acquired the power of the Light Reaver, so let's retreat back through here. Strike the stone to charge it. Use the Dark Reaver to become... Use the Dark Reaver spell to become invisible. Mm, okay, but how do I switch the Reavers? Mm, four and six. Mm, okay, so this is the dark one. And use the spell to become invisible. Okay. How does that? How does that help me? Though? Ah, okay. I get it now. And I need the light one now. So now, I guess I'm just supposed to go back through here, right? To the other side, where the other elemental shrine was. I mean, not the shrine, but the door blocked by an elemental power. Okay, so not even to the other side, just over here.
Okay, so I can charge this and then release the spell to become invisible, thereby being able to go through here. So I'm just supposed to jump through. chance for me to turn corporeal? There is. Okay. presume uh, the dimensions of the pillar are going to change. Yeah, you can even see it shifting from down here. Mm. I presume it's going to be smaller, uh, thereby allowing me to jump onto it. Against all odds, I had stumbled into Cain's own mausoleum. This seemed an unlikely coincidence. Hmm. Okay, this is very interesting. It also seems to make little sense, but I'm going to uh, talk about it once I... Uh, once I turn back corporeal. Because, mm, first of all, that looks very little like Kane from Blood Omen 1. Uh, but second of all, it's weird that he even has a mausoleum. Because, essentially... Although, hmm, okay, I take, that, I, I take that back. Because I was about to say he didn't even spend that much time dead. Because he returned as a vampire. But, but then, in reality, I don't know how long it was because he was stuck in hell, pretty much. And and time might have flown differently in there. Like, it might have been only a bit from his perspective, but maybe years have passed uh, back on Nosgoth, you know, in the physical realm. So maybe he had people who would care enough to give him a funeral uh, and to bury his body. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact that this painting, this mural, it looks very little like Kane to me. Kane's family crest.
presume Kane's family crest opens a door of some sorts. mausoleum is, is again a little bit weird to me, because Cain as a human, mm, back when he was still alive, he didn't strike me as a particularly wealthy or powerful nobleman, he striked me as a minor nobility with overinflated ego, be because like he was traveling uh, back in Black Omen, uh, Blood Omen 1, he was traveling with, with, with no entourage, you know, no servants or anything. Mm. And he stayed uh, in a random tavern all by himself. Uh, not to mention, he also got murdered by a bunch of peasants. Uh, and all of those things, you know, they don't paint a picture of a particularly powerful no noble nobleman to me. Telekinesis to shatter objects. Okay.
again I experienced an odd sense of displacement as I was transported to the vampire ruin once more. But this chamber was different than the first. In their defeat, the vampire's enemy retaliated with a terrible curse, afflicting the vampires with a bloodthirst that turned their once noble race into ravenous predators. This curse plunged the vampires into despair and apparently drove many to madness and self-annihilation. What was it that so devastated them that they were driven to suicide? What? F first of all, uh, this is recapping what I already knew from Soul Reaver, so uh, even down to the very murals, like they are very similar uh, to, to the ones that I've s seen in Soul Reaver, and they were telling the same story, so I'm not sure uh, what's the need for that. But the other thing that's kind of weird is that, that Kane, uh, I mean, Raziel seems to have answered himself because he was like, uh, Oh, the vampires were cursed with a terrible bloodthirst uh, and some of them were driven to such despair that they killed themselves and then he was like, hmm, what could have caused them to kill themselves? Like, didn't you just answer yourself in that first sentence? Like, it was the curse of, of bloodthirst uh, that made them despair, right? Although, that's an interesting semantic point because he's referring to them as vampires even before they were afflicted with the curse of vampirism, like the in the, the the thirst for blood is is like a like an innate uh, quality of a vampire. It's what what makes a vampire in pop culture. So they they, they weren't vampires before that. Uh, I guess we just don't know what that race was called mm, before they were afflicted with the curse. Wait, but I was here before. Was I not? Technically speaking, it was a different chamber, it just looked, it just had the same layout. I had succeeded. The reaver was forged with the power of light, and now my way was clear. I would seek out Ariel at the pillars and see if she could enlighten me. Okay, but first I need to defeat this guardian, I guess.
let's explore all of the chambers before I leave this place. I guess I died. I wasn't even paying attention to my health. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. At last, the gate yielded to the powers of light and darkness with which the Riva had been forged. The way to the pillars was open. Let's go then. Hmm, I guess they are going to converge at the pillars, kind of. Is something for later? It seems that there's something missing here. How strange to see this place long before my birth. Centuries before the corruption set in that would poison the land and put me on the treacherous path I still followed. In the future, these edifices would be condemned to darkness and decay. I would cause their fall and build my empire upon their ruins. Was it still possible that with the right knowledge, the right moves, I might one day see Nosgoth restored, the pillars pure once more? My answer, according to Mobius, lay somewhere to the west of this place. I could restore the world, perhaps, but never again could I give Nosgoth back her innocence. What does he even mean? What does it mean to give Nosgoth back her innocence? Uh, as far as I understand, it is you. Uh, it was. It has always been 
you know, your standard uh, quasi-medieval fantasy setting with its own share of cruelty and, uh, you know, and, and injustice and whatever uh, matches in every other kind of story or in every other kind of world. What does, what does he even mean by talking about Nosgoth's innocence? That sounds weird, especially coming from Cain, because he does not strike me uh, as a person overly concerned with, with things such as innocence. So overall, I don't actually understand what he meant. Checkpoint is not too far away.
accomplished literally nothing. Offering only this empty vista, was this another of Mobius's little jokes? Or a puzzle for which I had not yet found the answer? Well, there is clearly something missing here. That much is pretty obvious. This symbol seemed familiar. Perhaps I needed to recover another fragment of the balance emblem before I could proceed. Hmm. Where is... where are the shots coming from? of the of the thing magic that I picked up now might be used to uh, open the gate from before because there was an element missing there of that I am quite certain. Oh, oh. 
uh, indeed there was an element missing right here although i have activated this by by absolute accident like i was just fighting and using the clicking action to, to attack to go back yet um, and in fact it's a good thing that there's a checkpoint here because I feel like this episode uh, has been long enough so I'm going to save here and end it for now that's all for this one and I will see you in the next one bye